This is Anna Diffin Teaches from the Depths. Simple APS turret in a 3x3 mount. To start with, you want to begin with a platform. I am utilizing my fortress because it has an integrated target, which will allow me to test it readily against actual armor. Next, you want to place the template down. This is a 3x3 mount, as shown by the light alloy, and it is surrounded by the 5x5 hard casing. This 3x3 can rotate happily within this 5x5 with no problems and no clipping issues. Next, I place a wooden block. This represents the spin block. The reason I don't work actually on the spin block normally is that on large turrets, or on any turret, you can accidentally delete the spin block while constructing the turret, and some of these larger turrets can take quite a long time to build, so losing all that work can be infuriating. When working with, on a wooden block, if you delete this, then there's quite often other components touching the ground or other surfaces of the build, and so the whole turret won't just disappear. So I have further constrained my building. I only have one, two, three, four, five, six blocks of internal space. Then there's going to be the collar onto the hull, and then it will actually be the turret cap on the top. The reason I am going for this size is that if you're using a 3x3 turret, you generally going to have it fairly small and spam it around the ship, or it's going to be on a very small starting vessel. So I'm actually placing the local weapons controller along with its failsafe and receiver on the turret block itself. This is so that I can just place this prefab down once I have completed it anywhere on a ship and it will just instantly work. I don't have to worry about trying to figure out where to put a local weapons controller on, well, on the underside of the ship. Next, I, I place as many autoloaders in here as possible to have the highest fire rate as I can. So I can actually put five in here the reason I'm doing it like this is that this will then have each one will have its own clip. I'm utilizing the solid clips because they produce a less lag than the open ones. One thing I've done here, I have placed these in this orientation, which is incorrect. I want to actually place them in this orientation like so, so I can place ammo input feeders on the side. So here we go, I have added on all the ammo input feeders I can for these loaders. It doesn't matter that these clips here don't actually have an input feeder. These will load into all the clips attached to the autoloader itself. So now I've placed the firing piece, a increaser and a couple of gauge increasers here to connect this all together. So this now is essentially a, a loaded turret. I just need to configure the ammo now and also put on barrels so since this is just test tester I'm going to put on the 3x3 mantlet so I can fire at each of these panels to see how well the ammunition is doing. Barrel length is determined by the type of ammunition you're using and how much propellant you are, are using. You always want to have a bore evacuator as that increases the fire rate, so you do not have to have it closer to the piece. You can have it anywhere along the barrel. I normally place it at the end or a little bit further down in order to be more cosmetically pleasing. Adding more evacuators doesn't actually improve the cooling any further. When setting the number of barrels for the gun, you want to have it set as high as possible as this will vastly increase the fire rate. Of course, you do have a limitation as to the maximum gauge you can have with certain numbers of barrels for how many gauge increases you use. But if you're using a, say, anything over 250 millimeter, you can only have one barrel. Anything less than that, you can have two or more barrels. And you should always try to do so as much as possible rather than just increase the number of amount of cooling you are using. Since this is a small gun, I do believe that 179mm is going to be a little bit large, so I'm going to change the barrel size, can increase the number of barrels, say if I increase it to 6, the gauge is 54mm. This would be perfect for a very high velocity rapid fire minigun. So I've placed down an arbitrary number of ammo customizers, and I'm going to set myself a Sabo round. So I'm going to give myself a spow head and probably a couple of solid, yeah, solid bodies there and then a base bleeder. 
And I'll just set this to the 54. 54. In order to see the amount of damage I am utilizing. So I've got 600, just shy of 600 meters per second muzzle velocity, which is very nice. And I require a barrel length of 6 meters minimum. I have a barrel length of, the mantlet length counts as 1, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I have more than enough barrel length for this propellant and the accuracy. Next, I need to select my, am my ammo input feeders and select the controller, and then I will force all intakes to take this as a source. Although the gun is ready to fire at the moment, I'm putting on a fall off shot predictor on the gun so that I can aim it more easily manually. So as you can see, I can now actually aim it and see where it fires. So if I now fire, it'll fire six shots instantaneously, then reload everything. Because I haven't set the rate of fire, so it will load each of these barrels with one round and then unload them all straight away. As you can see, bang. So it does a fair amount of damage. It's breaking through metal blocks and the odd beam here and there. But it isn't fully functional at the moment. I haven't tuned this yet. And how do we tune this? Well, we utilize the APS calculator, which you have been looking at at the bottom of the screen. So this is the Google Docs. I will be adding a shareable link at the bottom of this video for you to have a look at. So, the way I do this is you fill out all these values as to the specifics of your gun and then you can tune it accordingly in the game. If we have a look at here, so expected time to reload is 1.93. So put the hit in here, 1.93. I am utilizing six barrels. I have a bore evacuator. And my base cooldown is 2.23. 2.23. I am utilizing five rack loaders with four clips and they are standard loaders, so the length modifier is one. As you can see though, with this, I need three inputs per loader ideally. I actually have four per loader, so that is fine. And that will ensure that there's enough ammunition in those loaders to maintain the fire rate. If I say only had two loaders, after a while I would run out of ammunition in those clips. I can set my maximum reload rate to 208 if I had some cooling units. Unfortunately, I don't. So the maximum fire rate is what I refer to as the bursting fire, the 180 here. I refer to this bursting fire as quite often if you overcool a gun, you can actually fire a short rapid fire burst and do a lot of damage in a short space of time before the gun needs to reload. Or, well, cool down because it's already reloaded. So I just set the maximum fire rate here, going off the calculator's value there. I always go, always round up as it will ensure that this fraction will get used. Otherwise, I am basically wasting a tiny little bit of rate of fire. Not so much of an issue when you're firing this, but when you're firing some guns which only have around about a couple of rounds per minute, that fraction adds up over time significantly. Now, however, when I fire this gun, it now fires constantly. So there we have it. That is a fully functional APS system. However, I am not very happy with this system. I have some blocks of unused space here. And also, it's not that powerful. This admittedly is only a tiddly little gun, but it has no, it takes a while to destroy a beam. I would quite like it to be able to destroy a beam in two hits. I do that is I increase the gauge. So I'm actually going to reduce the numbers of barrels down to five, and that ups it to 263 millimeters, and I have to go tune it again. 2.43, five barrels, and then 2.81 cooldown. However, now the rate of fire has even dropped further, so I'm now up to 119, and I now need four coolers to get the maximum fire rate. In terms of space efficiency, I can add another loader in here by destroying this one and adding in another three clip loader. So if I add a clip there, a clip there, and one there, so I just need to rotate these around so I can add the actual inputs there and there. 
In fact, I'm going to adjust this one as well. So that I can add another input onto this one here. The reason I have done that, adding on three clips here, or three loaders onto clips here, is because of the inputs per loader required. So on the three clip loaders, I require 2.2, and on the four clips, I need 2.56. So unfortunately, this one here is not going to be fully loaded all the time. And during sustained combat, I will lose a small amount of fire rate. However, overall, my fire rate will have increased. The theorized fire rate improvement though is moot if I cannot improve my actual cooling of the system. So one way to reduce the cooling is reduce the amount of gas propellant you're using in a shell. So I have increased the number of warheads in this shell and thusly reduce the amount of gunpowder casing I am using. So it takes the same amount of time to reload, it's just that now it'll only take 2.6 rather than 2.8 seconds to cool down. And that does actually reduce the cooling a fair amount and pushes the rate of fire up slightly. Still a fair way off the 180 though. Another way is actually to add cooling systems onto the gun. I've added a couple up here, so they aren't too ex so they are exposed. But I, if I put them down here, I would remove actual auto loaders, which would significantly hamper my reload rate. So I just put the coolers in the amount of cooling here. I'm still missing two gauge coolers though, for optimum rate of fire. So interestingly, if I do remove one of these autoloaders, how does my rate of fire change? So it drops all the way down to 156. So it is very significant if I remove that. So this is one setup I'm seeing if will actually help the rate of fire. I've removed two of the four, four clip loaders and replaced one with a cooling and also the other one with a two and two threes. So already we've seen what happens when I remove one clip and add a third cooler. Let's see what happens if I remove another four, four meter one and add on the others. So remove that. So the current rate of fire is 256. So I removed one down and I added two three meter ones. So you've gone to 272 and I added a two into one as well. So I'm back up to 187. Just double check that is correct. So one, two, yep, two, two. It's important to always just double check against this because sometimes if I added, say, a one meter loader, you can end up reducing your rate of fire with the increased complexity. It's generally, if you're increasing the number of loaders, it's okay. It's sometimes, say, I removed this one here and then added four or four normal loaders the complexity is actually increasing very rapidly and this will at, at certain points mean that adding additional one clip loaders can be detrimental to the rate of fire of the gun in this case it is not so much because this is quite a simple reloading shell and the complexity is still fairly low so this gun, I am having a lot of difficulty with the cooling because I need one and a half more gauge cooling units and I can only fit three on. However, I am currently using only five out of six barrels. So if I replace one of the gauge cooling units with a gauge increaser and then go up to six barrels, this should actually improve the cooling. I can test that on, on here without even editing the gun. There we go. I have actually actually made the gun optimal. So here I require one and a half more gauge cooling units in order for the gun to function. If I reduce it down to two, but increase the number of barrels, it will become optimal. And I believe this will be, work fine. There, I have just replaced the cooler with another gauge increase and the gauge 63 can be maintained at six barrels. So this means the gun can now be optimally fired at 188 rounds per minute. So here we go, we can now fire the gun much, much faster. You will notice though, that it's at the moment it is pausing. That's because I am waiting for all of these to load. And I also haven't connected this properly. So yes, 
can see here, this is not connected because I have not actually angled the clip in the correct orientation. So let's just do that and replace all of these clips. And then reload them. And there you go. That will now say, see, three, three shells, three racks, three racks, four racks, four racks, three racks, three racks. So all those are now actually correctly connected. It's something you just need to be aware of when building these guns, that sometimes you end up putting them in the wrong orientation because, quite honestly, they look fairly similar. Rate of fire, though, is increasing. It's still not the damage I would like, though. So let's go back and edit the shell. And this shell will work well whenever. An inertial fused frag warhead. The frag warheads will always do huge amounts of damage, no matter the size of the round. I just need to now tune this gun up a little bit. So just checking the tuning. Nothing has actually changed, which is great. That means the gun is fully tuned. Uh, but I want to test the gun and unload it. So the easiest way to do that is edit the gun, change the gauge, and all the rounds will be vented out of the system. So just test firing the gun. You can see that it's doing a lot of periphery damage, but not actually destroying beams very well on its in its own right. This can be adjusted with the angle. I, however, find this makes some of them a little bit overpowered particularly if you go to one degree frags. These will all, means that all the frags will go in the same line and do a ridiculous amount of damage. So now I've set them all as to one degree frags. Is they're now destroying beams in two hits compared to before it was requiring about three shots to break a beam, whereas now it's taking two. These are considerably more powerful rounds. That, however, is the gun complete, so I'm just going to strip off that bit of scaffolding, just shows the Tom there, remove the APS fire predictor, and replace the mantlet, probably with an AA mantlet in this case, though that can depend on what you're aiming at. The AA mantlet or the 3 meter mantlet are going to be the ones you will probably use fairly regularly. The Omni Mantlet is useful for fairly large gauge weapons to allow them to track a new target quicker, as the turning speed on large blocks can be quite slow. This, though, is a nice quick turning gun. Next thing I must do is delete this block, the wooden block here. And now I can prefab this gun. So here we go, I will prefab the gun. And now I can go to a new object, a 2x turret, and it's going to be a 1x turret. Place the prefab and place it back like so. And now, if I test, the gun will rotate correctly. But I do need to configure it because at the moment it's set all wrong. So set that. Shell gauge is 63. And fire rate is 188. And then load all the rounds like so. And there we go. This is now firing without any trouble. So there we go. I have saved the prefab and saved it as now as a sub object. So I can place these down as often as I like. Just make sure they're actually loading. Yep, so it's loading because it's not changed at all. And all three of these will now work. So there we have it. That is a nice, simple 3x3 three three APS turret. Hopefully you learned a good deal about APS turrets and a bit about the calculator which I use for all my guns. Thanks for watching.